Okay. So now you're going to add on the second wire. And like I said, some people at this point will use the shoestring method, and that's the steez bassoons. I know some people will actually add on rubber bands too, so either shoestrings. Um, I know like um, Fuentes, sometimes they actually like to add on rubber bands into the same method. So that's pretty cool. Um, I do not do that method, but I know that it works for some people. Okay, so now we're going to add on the second wire, and like I said, go ahead and cut it if you haven't already. What we're going to do is, the second wire, I like to place um, a quarter of an inch south of the first wire. So you can go ahead and mark that if you want. Okay, or, um, since this is the first time we're putting it on, I like to imagine um, the halfway point between the bark and then just a little bit above that. And that works for now, and then like I said, the next day we can come back and actually measure this exactly. Okay. So, having the first tail of the first wire, so the tail of the first wire pointing towards you, um, we're going to do the same process, but now, having put the wire in the back, so it has a little backwards mustache, and remember the tail's facing you, Go ahead and pull it forward again, right over left. Bring it towards the back. Flip over the reeds, and now the tail, the first wire tail is facing away from you. And the arms are actually pointing towards you. And then right over left again. And then twist. Remember, you want it a little bit above halfway for now, and we'll measure again later. So we have the first tail away from you, second wire towards you. Okay, so now it's the same action, except for now you're using a mandrel. So, pull, and twist. And you, kind, you want to center the tails, and center being vertical center, you want to center those. So pull and twist. Like I said, you just have to keep doing this. By the end of a read, you'll know how to pull and twist if you don't know how to yet. So we have two wires now. Now go ahead and dip it again. And remember that crimping action? We're going to do that more this time. Um, more, but be very gentle in the, the middle section between the first and the second wire. Be very gentle, but we definitely want to hit there. So we want to be very gentle. Try to get different angles. And remember, slow action. I have split so many reeds doing this too fast. Oh, it's true. So, do that middle section. Get it kind of round. Do the sides and the tops. Make sure you're still going towards that fourth line on your mandrel. And then do the back section as well. Remember, we want to awaken the cane. So, now we have two wires. We're going to put on the third wire now. So having that second tip towards you, and it's the same thing. So we want to have that second tail facing you. Now we're going to put it on the third wire. This one, um, I like to put it uh, a third, oh, a third, a quarter of an inch away from the bottom. So that's where we're going to put it. Um, but like I said right now in this prelim area, it's okay if it's not exactly a quarter of an inch because you will adjust them again later. So we put them on the back, we crossed over, go towards the front, or the back, I should say, and now flip the reed over, and right over left again, and you twist. Alright, and now we just do the same pulling and twisting action. So the next step, while I'm going to do this, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next. Um, you will actually leave it to dry overnight, um, at least one night. And by that, it should be at least 12 hours to dry. And what you're going to do is you're just going to come in the next day and just see, like, how are my wires? How are they doing? And you just come in, you tighten your wires, and you leave it alone. That's all. <laughs> Don't touch it. Um... If you notice that, and by leave it to dry, leave it on the mandrel if you have one, or if you have multiple, if you don't want to leave it on the mandrel, you can leave it on that drying rack I showed you if you have one of those, or like for me, I leave it in my reed case. But if you leave it in the case, leave it open so it'll dry. The whole point is to dry the cane, because when you the cane dries, it actually shrinks a little, 
and that's when you can see what its true form is. Okay, before we leave it to dry though, we have one more step. So, now we have all three wires on there. What you're going to do, soak it again for a second, or dip it in water. Now is when crimping is all it's about. You're going to crimp every aspect of the bark literally for days. Um, <laughs> this can take a while. I know sometimes this takes me an hour. Um, like I said, Lisa, who's done this more than I have, it takes her only like 20 minutes max. Um, you have to do this slowly and you just back and you just go constantly all over the reed at different angles. The point is to get it around reed. Now, why do we want a reed to be round? Um, the shape of the back, which is called the spine, and the throat, in this instance, the, the bark is called the throat. Um, this actually, um, the way it's formed, supports the sound. And I mean that by a, a round reed will actually create a round sound and create a nice, dark, um, robust sound, or as I like to say, my dark chocolate sound, which is how, to me, that's how Abyssinian should sound. Um, if you make it a thinner reed or like a thinner in the back, or if it's, even if it's oval, it can create a more nasally sound, um, and this is more affected by the tip eventually on, but it helps if we already have a round reed to start with. So you just keep crimping all over, um, yeah. And you want to go to when it is round. So right now, mine's a nice diamond. That's not the shape you want. You actually want a round, complete circle. If you notice there's an oval, just keep working on it. It actually does take time and, like I said, patience, which I know I don't have. Um, so you just have to do it very slowly. And you want to do this bottom part too, so you should have three sections you're covering. You just want to be very gentle, but putting that pressure down. Laying down the law of the bassoon. Um, yeah, and you just want to keep working on it. And then once, the, once you get it round, and like I said, it takes a while, especially when you're new. It does take a while. Once you finish crimping, and it's a circle, what you will do is then tighten the wires once more. Leave it to dry overnight. When you come back the next day, come in, tighten the wires. If you notice that your reed is not round anymore on the back, but remember to leave it on here. Leaving it on the mandrel will actually leave it, keep its form and it'll support a structure from the inside. Come back the next day and you notice, oh no, it collapsed and now it's a sad face. Um, go ahead, wet the reed, let it soak for um, 40 minutes, maybe an hour, and then come back and you can crimp again. It just let it soak though for 40 minutes to an hour um, before crimping. Never crimp dry, but with reading, never crimp wet. So this though, if you're crimping the reed, don't crimp it dry. That's bad because you can just crack that open. If you have to, it's okay to keep reading the next day or the next two days. I actually leave it more than a day, but probably out of laziness and that my mind forgot that I'm making a bassoon reed. <laughs> um, but come back the next day, tighten the reeds, and I actually like to leave it out. Not just out of laziness, but I actually like to leave it out for a couple days because I know I don't tighten them very tight. So remember, tighten the reed, tighten the wires, check to see if it's round. If it's not round, you crimp for a while after you soak. So come back, and I will talk to you in three days' time. See you then.